Hey, what's going on my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you five things I think you should know about this upcoming new moon on September 2nd, 2024. This particular new moon to you might feel more like a full moon. Full moons, at least for me, seem to carry a greater potency, a greater intensity. They can feel like there's just this, this uneasy feeling of change and acceleration taking place in my life. I'm usually very sensitive to my own emotions, especially sensitive to other people's emotions. The energy of situations, places, people seems to affect me more. And it's just kind of an intense thing. It's kind of like uh, death and rebirth all at once. And that's what this new moon is like. It's kind of like it has some components of the new moon where parallel to what I just said, if you're feeling that, if you're feeling more sensitive, if you feel like there's a lot of change happening in your life, a lot of stuff coming up within yourself and also in your life to deal with. Also, you might hopefully by now be feeling some type of excitement for the future. Like now you finally know all of this is happening because it's giving way to a new chapter opening up in your life. And even though it hasn't yet uh, solidified quite yet, you can probably feel the energy of it as it, it's exciting, it's new, it's expansive, it's more you, more authentic, maybe different than you were expecting, but there's a lot opening up from the transformation that we've all been going through for quite some time. So anyway, I say all this because you might be feeling like this is kind of an intense new moon, but in my opinion and what you'll soon see in the reading, it's intensely positive. All of the challenges you may be experiencing right now, the intensity, things like that, are part of this huge upgrade you're going through. And I think if you watch until the end of the reading, you're going to see just how fantastic of a transformation this um, new moon energy is bringing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is break down this reading into five more uh, isolated and specific themes that you may be experiencing. And the intention of doing this video is to give you a sense of guidance, a sense of understanding of what's happening to you so you can make the most out of it. Because although intense, these new moons and full moons carry a tremendous amount of potential. And I have found just having a bit of awareness can just really allow me to move through these different themes and, and sometimes challenges and also opportunities way more gracefully. Number one is a fantastic time to get moving and get cracking on the new. To start moving yourself in some type of physical, real, proactive way towards where you want to go in life. You probably already have more of an idea than you maybe have in, 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 recent, in recent weeks. You're probably starting to at least get some type of idea of where this is all heading for you. And what can happen a lot of times when you're kind of in the middle of a transition, on one hand, you have this, again, this idea, this, this new direction you're excited to, to go into, but you feel like you're still heavily weighed down by the past, by, by your circumstances, by your the things going on in your life, also by your patterns. You might still feel like you're still tr working through these patterns that are kind of just, again, making it difficult, slow going to move forward. And, and the combination of all that can make you feel just tired. Like I don't have even the energy or the time the, uh, on my schedule in my day to really do anything proactively moving me forward. But what I found in my own experience going through these types of big transformations is that oftentimes it is just the almost forcing myself to do something that brings me even a couple of inches closer to where I want to go that lifts me out of the past, lifts me out of the patterns, restores my faith and my trust. Because when there's a lot of change going on in your life, by definition, there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty. And when there's all this uncertainty, which is just part and parcel of this awakening process we're all going through, that's when our, our issues and our nervousness and our anxieties and our fears and doubts and all those things come up to the surface. And then we kind of look at that in, in contrast with where we want to go and it, it can feel hopeless. I remember, for example, when I first started my YouTube channel, 
It was like this super exciting thing. I had so much passion. I had such a calling to do it. And because at that time, once I started kind of inching my way towards it and making videos, my life started breaking down all the things that were not in harmony and in resonance with this new path I was going down just started falling away. And, and because there was so much uncertainty, all my insecurities and doubts from childhood and adolescence were coming up to the surface, making filming those videos extremely difficult. It was kind of frustrating because on one hand, I felt a call to do this new thing. But on the other hand, I felt less confident in myself than maybe ever before in my life. But what I found is what I'm telling you is in spite of that, just filming the videos, it elevated me. Whereas if I just thought about filming the videos and, and, and sort of contemplated it and planned it, that's when the anxiety and the patterns and even the mess of my life was just weighing me down and suffocating me. It was just a courageous, imperfect action towards my dreams, even if, again, if it was an inch or so, not much. That is what kind of kicked everything into gear, allowed all the different things in my past to finally fall away, like more <clears throat> permanently, and it was like I, through my own action, was able to lift myself out of this kind of funk I felt stagnant in. And sometimes you're stagnant and there's not much you can do about it. We just came out of Mercury retrograde. And for me, that energy is kind of like I get a lot of information that I don't quite know what to do with, even though it's all kind of valuable. A lot of different puzzle pieces, but no puzzle. And regardless, even if I start to get some semblance of clarity of where I want to go next, I feel kind of like murk, like I'm treading on murk, in, in murky waters and it just doesn't feel like I can gain any traction. And it's true, I can't. But Mercury retrograde is finally passing and the energy is shifting. And even though that may have been how it was for a while, I challenge you, I invite you, encourage you to take action, to wake up tomorrow and do one simple thing. Maybe it takes you 10 minutes that will bring you closer towards your dreams and to see how you feel. And that's kind of, that's, if anything, another incentive to do it, because that's another thing I found. Because when I was in that midst of change, as I was saying, when I was going through my YouTube transformation or transition, I just felt so uncertain, so doubtful, but just the awareness that I was do that I empowered myself to do something, make some crappy video, as an example, that gave me a sense of confidence and trust and a feeling like, it's going to be okay because I'm doing something about it. Just the, the feeling of progress, the best way I could put it, is very comforting. It's like this uh, old mentor of mine. He talked about this in business, but, but it applies to life as well. He said, action alleviates anxiety. A lot of times when we sit around and we stew and we think and we ruminate, we become really anxious and it makes the idea of action very difficult. But just the awareness of yourself taking charge of your life, that empowering feeling allows you to feel like, it, okay, there's a lot going on in my life, a lot coming up right now, a lot I've yet to learn, a lot I don't really know, you know a lot of uncertainty still, but you know what? In spite of that, I'm moving forward. And when you witness yourself taking action in your life, it does have that effect I have found. Number two is gonna seem very different, but it's also very connected. What did I have written down here, actually? It's a spiritual upgrade. It's almost like your thoughts and your feelings, you might notice, are manifesting in physical reality a lot more quickly. That's what I've been experiencing anyway. I mentioned before in a video recently that I had these really intense heart palpitations, so much so that I was not sleeping at all. I would, I'd be up for like six, seven hours lying awake in bed, concerned that I'm having a heart attack. I'd wake up at three in the morning and I'd go online and type in symptoms of a heart attack. And I had like three or four of them, shortness of breath, heart palpitations, tightness in my chest. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So I finally went to the doctor and immediately the doctor, he, he like listened to my heart and I could just tell by his demeanor that he knew I was completely fine and he even said so. He's like, you're okay. However, I can see you're, up, you're worked up about this. Would you like to do some tests so that you know you're okay? It was almost like that type of vibe. And I was like, yes, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> so we did an EKG and things like that. And I left feeling like, okay, I, I know now logically that I'm completely fine. 
you know? And then I started to sleep a couple nights and I felt better. And then what started happening is my shortness of breath started to become an issue. And even though the heart kind of calmed down or at least my anxiety about it faded away, I found I couldn't catch a breath. And I've, I've had mild asthma over the course of my life that seems to be induced by like allergies or like really dry, cold environments, things like that. Um, but this has never been a real problem. But I went for like three or four days, like <sighs> unable to breathe. And then when I would try to go to bed and not be able to breathe fully, my anxiety would kick in, the heart palpitation came back and it was this whole thing again. And all of a sudden, I found myself having the same concerns, the same worries, the same fears associated, not with the heart, but now with my lungs. And at that point, I realized that I was literally creating it all in my mind. It was real sensation. However, it was a, a physical representation of my choice to worry and focus. And I was seriously impressed in a way with my ability to create almost like a life-threatening problem in my body just purely from my mind. And anyway, regardless, there was a whole bunch of lessons I learned from that. But the most important thing was to show me like my, where I focus my attention, it, it like, it manifests. Now that's just me. Maybe you have something completely different going on. Like my wife, for example. My wife, Years ago when she wanted to become, when she was becoming really interested in plant medicine and, and things like that and, and connecting with the plants spiritually, she, you could not find her without a book. She always had a book and she's always, she'd ever, we'd go to the gym and she'd be sitting at the bench, you know, in between sets and reading her book and, you know, it was always like, what are you reading now? You know, she was just studying voraciously. It's been a while. But now she's back at it again and she's studying things about like like the history of Jesus and and the Essenes and all these like esoteric kind of perspectives on that. And she's studying, you know, enlightenment and all these cool things. And, you know, anytime, anytime you uh she finds a, an open ear, she will just start sharing all this cool stuff she's learning and she's excited and she's she's learning about things that she's trying to integrate into her life spiritually. She's reading the Bhagavad Gita, all these different spiritual texts, and she's taking them seriously. There's a, there's a hunger, a yearning to go deeper spiritually. And maybe that's you. Maybe you, have, you can't relate with manifesting physical problems out of just your worry, but maybe you're, all, you're drawn, like my wife, to, to spiritual texts. Or maybe you're really, you feel this knowing that you got to go and you know, drink plant medicine or go and do, do like a silent meditation retreat or something. It's like sometimes your spirit will call you to whatever it is you need. For me, it was this <laughs> a challenging experience. My wife, it's books, luckily. And uh, you, it might be something completely different, but you might feel it's calling to do something that will work for you. Me, the heart palpitations, that was my spiritual teacher. My wife, conveniently, it's the books. Maybe it's something on the mild side, maybe not. But regardless, there's an opportunity to embody uh, a truly deeper level of spirituality. Spirituality is just a word. These are just concepts. It's, it's the degree in which you live them in your daily life, the degree in which you have compassion, you have faith, you have trust in the universe, the degree in which you do things without an attachment to outcome. These are all just ideas. And it's a, it's a practice for us to apply them. But there are these kind of like astrological windows or maybe it's just the timing of your own journey where you find yourself dropping in a little bit deeper and able to apply them a little bit more. And of course, what are the, what's the result of that? Well, a greatly improved life on all imaginable levels. Number three, it's a great time to fill in the empty space of your life. Maybe the void you feel because there's probably been a lot of letting go in your life, not just of things and you know, mindsets, patterns, interests, all these things. Sometimes you get to a point in your life where all of a sudden nothing, it doesn't, none of it fits and it's just letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. And you, there's a time in between the new and the old where you're just like in limbo and you feel this void. Sometimes people just wake up one day and realize there's something seriously missing in their life and they've been trying to find it in other ways. 
and you start to realize that these other ways are just not doing it and not ever going to do it. And that begs the question, well, what is it? What's missing? A lot of times what's missing is your passion, your purpose, the things you can do or in, involve yourself with that, that bring about this childlike joy. And it can be anything. Funny, me and, me and Aaron, Aaron Dowdy, a YouTuber friend of mine, we were out to dinner a couple weeks ago and we were getting this really awesome like tableside Caesar salad. This, this lady came up and she was like making our salad and we were talking to her and she, was, she said the most peculiar thing. She was talking about how the only time she feels at peace and like safe is on an airplane, <laughs> if you can believe that. We were like, really? That's a very unusual thing. And normally it's the opposite for people. We, we were kind of talking with her. She was like, yeah, something about it. Something about being on the airplane. It just makes me feel alive and safe and like, and the way she was talking about it, it was so obvious to me and Aaron that this is like what you're meant to do. And we were like, have you ever pursued that? Why don't you like become a flight attendant? And she's like, well, you know, I have, I tried out a couple of years ago and I didn't get in. And you know, you could just tell it's like she attempted it and then she had like one little setback and then she kind of gave up. And you could just see like her energy was not one who was like really happy and in alignment with her like potential. And it was so clear, like what she, this lady needs to do is like become an air, a pilot or something or an air, uh, an attendant. She had enough signs in her life to show her like for whatever reason, this is where you feel at your best. What is it for you? Maybe it's not flying an airplane. It's probably not for most of you. What is it? I, I was talking to another a coaching client recently and it was kind of the same thing. This person, this person loves music. And I think they, they like, they've liked playing trumpet, if I recall, the trumpet in like a band or something. And they, 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 when they played the trumpet, they were in the flow, they felt alive, they felt amazing. But you know, at one point they kind of went off on this tangent and, and started this whole career basically come to find just to kind of a, impress or win over the approval of mom and dad. It was like this tangent, which we all go down. A lot of times these like big pursuits in life, we wake up out of one day and realize they're not authentic. I mean, anyway, regardless, the way this came about, this awareness came about with this other individual was just feeling horrible, feeling miserable, feeling depressed, feeling exhausted, feeling burnt out. And it's like, what's going on? Why is my life, how has this happened? And then what she did eventually, she let go of the, the job and then she, I don't even know what a trumpet looks like. She picked up the trumpet. It's, it's not a violin, it's a trumpet. I don't know what the hell a trumpet is. <laughs> but she picked up the trumpet and I could just see her light up. I could watch her energy kind of expand when she talked about that trumpet. And it was like, that's what you gotta do. So much in life. And that's what this is. This is like has nothing to do with the video, obviously. <laughs> I talk about the, the, uh, the zone of genius. Um, the zone of genius is like doing something that puts you in the flow, that puts you in the zone. And I use music here as an, an example. You probably can't see it. But what happens is a lot of us all, we all have, it's from this book, The Big Leap, the zone, a lot of us, we all have like a zone of genius, something that elevates us and transcends our normal, ordinary ability and brings forth the brilliance of our soul, basically. And, and when we do, it feels amazing. Like for me, I come alive when I'm coaching people, as an example, making videos sometimes, things like that, writing. Um, but a lot of times, unfortunately, is people have this and they kind of know what it is, but something happens in their life that makes them think this is not something I should be doing. Like for one of them, it's like, I don't have time for music. I don't have time to play the trumpet. It's not gonna make me money. How can I make money as a musician these days? Even these big artists, they're on iTunes and it's free. How is this going to work? You know, we have these ideas, these beliefs, these things that people have told us, or we had a negative experience. Maybe I played trumpet and someone said, you suck. And then that one, that one comment caused me to put it down because it was so painful. And then slowly but surely there's this dull ache that forms in your life. And you try to fill it in other ways, but there's nothing else that can fill it. 
No amount of success or money or even love from other people can fill it unless you pick that trumpet up again. What is your trumpet? What have you been not doing because something happened or something you think a certain way? I'm telling you, play the trumpet. Maybe the trumpet is your new career, maybe not. It doesn't matter because when you play that trumpet, however you play those things, what happens? You elevate yourself. You elevate yourself into a higher state of consciousness where the business idea will come, the million dollar idea, the insights will come. And when you're in your zone of genius, you're contributing to the whole. Even someone, I, I believe anyway, even someone playing the trumpet, for example, by themselves in their house. If you think about the myriad of different like distorted vibrations being put out there in the world. Like for example, I go fishing sometimes and there's this like big noisy power plant around and it's, it's not a harmonious, pleasant, high vibe sound that emanates out of this, this freaking smoky, smoggy power plant, right? But someone playing trumpet, not just the music, but them. When, they're, when you're doing what you love, your frequency, which is very powerful, it radiates way beyond your physical body, that elevates. And you're transmitting those vibrations out into the world. Imagine if everybody did that. If everybody played trumpet. If everybody did what lights them up. You would take, it's like a dimmer switch on a, on a light. Everybody would be lit up. And we would bombard this, this, this planet with all this beauty, radiating, higher frequency, love, passion, etc. And everyone thinks, well, it's just one person. No, no, no. It's, we're a collective. If everyone thinks like that, that is the reality. It starts with people who watch videos like this, who are into this kind of stuff, to say, you know what, even though no one else is doing playing the trumpet, even though it's become normal to abandon your dreams in exchange for what people tell you you ought to do, mom, dad, teacher, society, I'm just going to follow the herd. No, don't follow the herd. Be an individual. Be a, a trendsetter. Be the change you wish to see in the world. You have no idea the ripple effect it has energetically. In fact, I'll just share this one last example and I'll move on. I was talking to this other coaching client recently and there was something she really wanted to do and it was start making these YouTube videos. But she had this sort of inner conflict about competition. She had like a bad taste in her mouth about competition from like when she was a kid and she swam, things like that. But anyway, we worked through that like a couple of weeks ago, right? And I saw her yesterday on another call. And, and because she like kind of gave herself permission to become competitive again, which is something that was in this cool lady's nature, she said she made four videos and her niece already is like a super fan. And the niece is applying the things she was saying in the videos. Now the niece is helping her make videos. And it's like she, that, that niece may have never had her example when she was holding herself back. And that's just the beginning. This is just within a week. Imagine within five years, 10 years, how many people will be inspired by this one woman's decision to pick up her trumpet. You owe it to all these people. Number four. One of the big reasons folks don't pick up their trumpet is because they have big problems that are like a distraction. And it can seem, and this happens all the time, as, again, as a coach, we have this program called The Full-Time Purpose where my friend Aaron Dowdy and I, we help people, we, we show them how to create an online business around their passion, around their calling, things like that. Healers, psychics, coaches, you know, we tend to get a lot of artists, people like that come in and we show them how to grow a following and do all these things. And here's a phenomenon that happens all the time. We, we open up enrollment, people come in and they're excited. They feel calling to do it and it resonates. And then life happens. And then their landlord gives them the boot and they got to move. Or there's a relationship, uh, you know, parting, a divorce, or there's like, they break their leg or not warning you that bad things will happen, but sometimes things in life get in the way. And, and they'll come on the calls and they'll say, man, you know what? I don't know what it is. I had all this momentum and all of a sudden it's like these, these freaking problems just came into my life and now it feels like I, I, I can't do what I wanted, wanted to do. These are problems. These are blockages. This is stopping me. And for me, what I've learned is these problems, these blocks are part of the forward progress so long 
as we learn from them. I could have made the same case. There's new things I'm working on right now in my career, in my business. I can't sleep. My heart's bumping out of his chest for no freaking reason. Oh, okay, we'll deal with that. Now I can't breathe. Oh my God, these problems. If I can't sleep, I can't work. If I can't work, I'm not making progress. Oh my God, what's going on? Woe is me. No, thank you. It's a blessing. Why? Because it taught me so much. It, aside from what I mentioned earlier, another thing I realized is it was connected to my incessant tendency to worry. Beyond my physical body, I worry about everything. My mom used to worry, and she would even admit it. And I've always done it, honestly, and I've always kind of known about it. And it's, it was kind of both conscious and unconscious, but I'm seeing now just how detrimental it is to me living my best life. And I needed these problems to show me that. How much was this unconscious worry stopping me from reaching my potential in life? A lot probably. Because as I can see the worry was manifesting in my body, I see how worry is affecting my marriage. How worry is affecting the quality of time with my kids. And I'm always worried about them. I'm not really present with them. How I, I get wor worry. Worry, worry, that's a, a big a theme of mine, obviously, but this problem showed that to me. And now I can do something about it. Now I, I'm more conscious of it. I'm still a, a work in progress, but I can see it now in other areas of life. And I can begin the process of no longer letting it stop me from doing the things I wanna do in life. Thank you, problems. So I, always, I see this all the time. You know, Eckhart Tolle, he calls this like a, a deepening. He gave a different example. I'm a big fan of Eckhart Tolle. He talked about this one woman one time that really felt the calling to become a spiritual teacher. And she, she knew it was like her calling to do so. And she tried. She, she signed up for like, you know, business courses and tried to do all these different things. And no matter what she did, she was met with just failure and setback and failure and setback. And it just, years went by and she asked herself, why, you know, why is this not happening? And then she started to attract a whole bunch of problems in her life. She, she got cancer, I think it was, something like that. She was divorced. She, was, she had to she started making money because she was sick. She couldn't work, so she was like out of a house. And her whole life kind of crumbled before her. And you know what happened, though? That, like, those experiences, like, shifted something in her and elevated her. And now she's a fantastic spiritual teacher. I don't know who she is. And this, this is a story Eckhart Tolle said. But he said the, these problems were exactly what this teacher needed to really walk the walk. So maybe me, maybe the, and a lot of times what I found is when you get the message, these problems go away. I don't think we have to necessarily manifest cancer and things like that these days. Sometimes it can be like, we have a greater awareness now where we're aware of like even subtleties in our life that are off. And if we look at them and don't victimize ourselves and say, why have I attracted this? Why have I attracted heart palpitations? There must be a reason. There must be a positive reason. And if I can find it, problem goes away. Problem doesn't have to grow. You know, for me, like, the going to the doctor and him telling me my heart's okay, that was not really, I didn't learn the lesson. That's why I had to come back three days later in a lung and like, okay, now I can't breathe because I didn't get the lesson. Thankfully, after those two things, I do. But what are your problems trying to teach you? That's a good question to meditate on around this time. And finally, regardless, it's a time to move towards your exciting new goals. But I wanted to just share with you something along that vein that I've learned, and that is this, and something you've probably heard before. But there's nowhere to go but here. I'm not saying it in some kind of like metaphysical, deeper spiritual thing. I mean that. As someone who has spent the last probably, I don't know, 10, 20 years of his life working towards things. My friend Aaron Dowdy as well, he's in a very similar boat as me. As of recently, we found ourselves having literally everything we could have ever wanted. Like for me, I have a family. I have a, 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 I'm living my purpose, abundance, happiness, for the most part, health. I even have time to play guitar all day and fish and do all these hobbies. And it's like all these things. I still felt like there was something missing. Aaron too, he just recently moved out to uh, Los Angeles 
we, we were in Costa Rica a few months ago and he, he discovered how much he loves surfing. So he thought, you know what? I have the abundance and the freedom just to move to California on a whim. And he did. He kind of goes all over the place now. But now he's, he's in Venice and he's like right by the beach and he surfs every day. And he finally had like this, he had this idea of what an amazing life would be like. And he created it for himself pretty quickly, you know, as recently. And, and four days later, he said, hmm, I'm kind of bored. This, this is not it. And I have come to the same realization. And what we both kind of have concluded is that we need something in our life to work towards. We need a, a North Star is what he says, a goal. And he says, but it's not about getting to the goal so we can be happy. It's about having a goal. The pursuit of the goal is, brings a dimension of happiness. So it's time to work towards something. And a lot of you don't even know what it is, and that's okay. Reminds me of David Goggins. David Goggins, some of you know him. He's, he's kind of like a hard ass. Cool dude, in my opinion. Real inspiring in many ways. Um, and he talks about finding your purpose. And he's like, man, you got to just be ready for your purpose. Meaning like if you don't know what life has in store for you, be ready for it so you can seize it when it comes. A lot of people, they just sort of, they just sort of like coast through life and there might be this void that they have yet to be able to fill and they're like, and that makes them depressed. So they eat junk food at night and they watch too much TV and they, they smoke a bunch of weed and they don't, they don't do anything with themselves. David Goggins says, screw that says, wake up early, meditate, go to the gym, eat healthy, read good books, surround yourself with good people so that when your purpose does come, you are on your A game. And I found that to be true as well. Just the, just the living my best life, living with intention, living with purpose, really trying to better myself is a source of happiness. And I've gotten to many things I thought I was going to like make a big difference in my life. And none of them have. I remember one of them was like a hundred thousand followers on YouTube. In fact, it's funny. I was just talking to Aaron. I was just talking to Aaron because he's got like 500,000 or some more thousand followers on Instagram. And he was talking about this buddy of his with a million followers. And you could tell Aaron like wants to get to that point. Anybody knows, he knows that it's, it's sort of like, it's like you get to a million followers and then you're happy for like 10 minutes. And then you start looking around at people with 10 million followers and you feel small all over again. So it's not about getting anywhere. Every upgrade I've made in my life situation has been met with a temporary excitement, like uh, like Christmas morning with opening presents kind of feeling. <gasps> and then it becomes normal. So too with the downgrades. I shared, I think recently how at one point my whole family sold, uh, we sold like our nice house in a nice community and we got rid of our jobs and businesses and cars and we moved into a 21 foot travel trailer with my family, all the kids and dogs, cats, it was nuts. And after a short while, that downgrade became normal. It's all normal. It's all, nothing's going to, no big break is going to do anything for you. I can tell you from my own experience. But having something that you're, you're waking up and pursuing can bring a, a whole dimension of happiness and purpose in your life. And now's a great time to do that. But, but learn from my mistakes. You're probably, you're probably already doing something like that. You're, there's probably already something you're getting after. I can almost, I can predict that. Um, but just a little word of the wise, a friend to a friend, do it for the sake of it. Don't hype it up too much in your mind is, is what I'd recommend. So with that said, my friends, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace.